My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to the settlement that we managed to save in the last episode here. In Against the Storm. These two emergency ranchers having turned out quite well in the instant. We are also now, at this point, attempting to expand slightly lower so that we can clear out enough space in order to get a second half down there. We've already got, well, I guess a third half because we've already got our second up here. Almost gonna upgrade into its next level just need a couple of free build uh, builders with enough time to actually work on it now we do have yes an excess of planks at this point so we should be able to get the upgrade for production speed in the mine which that could end up being important right because building materials building materials where are thou building materials makeshift post is the only place that's currently making them i mean i could get the lumber mill Oh no, it only makes trade goods. Sure, I'm actually going to salvage the lumber mill then. Getting more trade goods for the very delivery and expensive delivery two pack that we have to do. But we also have the pack of building materials. I mean, cloth is the easiest thing for me to work with here, sure. Uh, and we have enough when we have 30 of them now. just for the final two missions to finish out. We should also take note of the people in here who do not have anything to be working on at this point. Um, let's move you both out. Still not particularly comfortable in terms of food. Only got 27 jerky at the moment. Mmm... Okay, yeah, that's yeah, that's our next big problem. Guildhouse, Scribe, and Beaver House, none of these are helping my food situation. The Scribe in general seems correct, though. Since we do offer some education in this facility. Yeah, we're low on food again. When do we have the next trader come into town? 117... Storm is about to start. Unfortunately, that means the trader is not going to come until the end of the storm as well. Trade goods and luxury goods, sure. We'll take another pack of those. Yikes. Need for brawling fulfilled and training gear. That is easier than some of the others for us to attain as well. Hmm... Okay. I'm going to go from the employment level. Who don't need their job? We've got two idling in the kiln right now, and we... Yeah, aren't likely going to need another one for long. So you can finish up in there, freeing up a couple of people. Also got a couple of people idling in plant creation, but that's because we don't have enough wood. So really what we need to do is get our woodcutters generating wood faster. One way to do that is to generate it significantly closer to base. So I'm going to put that there and then cut down these trees. This one, do we need to move this that far? Not really. I can get a lot of food production down here with the scavengers camp. I should get a third woodcutters up, though. I think we're overdue for this still. This one ought to move too. Um, I'm only going to be able to get three of them in a single mine anyway, and I'm not going to want to do that until I'm, like, entirely out of coal production. So if that's not going to be a priority for us... Heck, this dangerous glade out here might be a good idea to start exploring next. Let's get a path out there as well. Great. Yeah, still low on food. That still sucks. Ranch probably doesn't have enough plant fiber or grain at this point to produce anything, unfortunately, for us. Some... 
farmable terrain here, which I... Oh, I really feel like I should expand into. I don't really have the ability to be picky about what food sources I take at this point, do I? I don't think I do. Let's have a look at where the hearths are going to go. Oh, wow. This is, like, actually kind of a, already a premium location for it. Perfect. Well, I'll start that there. Put a warehouse next to it. So we're going to be very heavily reliant on plucking all of the scavengeables out of those roots as quickly as possible. So I'm just going to have six free people to employ for that. Yeah, I actually do. All humans as well. Ought to do quite well. So now that we actually are being asked for luxury goods, I got a bunch of wine as it turns out. Absolute mess of the stuff. I only need 12 luxury goods though. If you could reduce those into priority, I would be happy about it. Alright. Can only choose one of these two to be complete. We are either getting 30 training gear, which would give us 20 training gear, but not the ability to have 20 training gear as well as 18 training fulfilled, unfortunately. Or we can get expensive delivery in order to get a, a three boost to global resolve for 1.5 minutes after we discover a glade, as well as plus three to grain production and 30 barrels of ale, which will then help us fulfill the need for leisure, which will then give us the cellar itself. Yeah, okay, we'll take that. Uh, the need for leisure, however, is still going to require us actually being able to give people the potable substances. So we are still looking for a tavern in our future. Smokehouse cellar brickyard, obviously not gonna be taking the cellar. I mean, I want to say that I'm going to be taking the smoke yard. But crystallized you and the bricks? I think we need that. You can go right about there, buddy. You're looking pretty comfortable. Uh, let's see if there's any... There we go, there's beavers in the bathhouse. I can move them out of there and into the woodcutting camp. Old Faloof has arrived. We've also got frequent caravans. Blue, uh, boost global resolve by 3 for 60 seconds every time you finish a trade route. Hostilities decreased by 15... Points whenever you sell 25 goods worth of amber. I mean, both of these are obviously heavily trade focused. Rich glades is for newly discovered resource nodes having 10 more charges each. I honestly think I have enough management of hostility. I want more resolve. And now I want more woodworkers. And old Faloof, have you got anything I want? Uh, nothing goes to waste. Repurpose clay. Gain two bricks for every ten pottery produced. Neat, but probably not a priority for us. Crystal growth for plus one to crystallized dew production. There's also reinforced axes for wood cutting being faster. We're all going okay. Uh, bricks. Copper bars. We are out of copper bars. They are also expensive, though. 25 barrels of oil. Crystallized dew. I could take the oil, certainly. I could offload some parts in order to increase my trading relationship with Abaton. I'm feeling increasingly like I should just hold off, keep all of my resources. Let's take the reinforced axes at the absolute least for faster wood cutting. And then I will hold off on the rest of those. I don't think any of them are pressing. 
Unfortunately, we have nothing left to jerk, so I'm gonna take you out of the smokehouse. Trading luxuries, still trying to make those luxury goods, eh? As your highest priority as well. I guess I just haven't let you run enough time. There we go. Have a couple other folk help you out there. Then we got the makeshift post, which is also trying to make... Packs of building materials, and I do need up to a total of 15 more. Well, 15 currently, so 8 more. Mmm, this whole low on food thing continues to pester and perplex us. Let's get as many crystal as you made there as quickly as possible. Also, I don't need to make bricks ever again outside of the brickyard, which is better at doing so. Uh, like, oh, okay, hang on. These are starting to actually come up. Great. So I can get people to actually start making the roots. That's what I was planning on the entire time. It's just, I was confused why it wasn't already occurring. There we go. One and two, and I will even fill out some roads for some more work up there. Grand. Are any of my quests promising now to give me more people? Ooh, this one's promising to give me trade and luxury. 20 more simple goods, a bunch of pies. Pies, that's food! 30 by Mamba as well. Um, I recognize at the end of this, though, that uh, I need to turn off simple tool production. We now have funny number. We now have funny number. We did it. But uh, what funny number now means is um, with unrepentant fury, please begin to open all of these glades. That's what I was preparing for this whole time and I didn't realize that the gun is not only exceptionally loaded, but there's one in the chamber as well. Exceptionally is the key word for me recently. I know, I recognize it in my own voice. I'm trying not to say it, but then I keep saying it. <laughs> but in the meantime, let's move our way into this leaking cauldron and old broken piece of rain punk technology. Uh, all food production is going to be 70% slow while we're doing it, but we could get plus two to grain production. We already have plus two to grain production, so that would turn all farming areas into insanely powerful farms. How the ever. Queen's Grace, one reputation. Queen's Grace, 0.7 reputation. I suspect that if I just complete all of these quests, break into another area, complete all the quests there, I will win. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna plan around living life at that speed. Let's take a couple of your Claudias out of there. Send them into the large abandoned quiche. Alrighty, Tony. I think everything's going down Millhouse here. Everything's coming up and going down Millhouse. Hmm. Anything else need doing for the moment, or do I just wait for these to get done so we have a couple folk free for a medium abandoned cache here? Oh, another one up here. Oh boy. As it turns out, breaking into the smaller glades here might have been a little helpful earlier on for getting the fertile soil. I've had a couple of people ask why I stopped breaking into small glades, and it's because I had a lot of comments from people who seemed a, a bit more adept at the game than I necessarily was demonstrating at the time, uh, saying that the hostility that you get for breaking into small glades seldom is made up for by the actual things you find in them, and instead, oftentimes, it is a better way to go for a dangerous glade so that you can get a little bit more information about the actual nodes you'll have to play with, and then can draft your blueprints around it. And I tend to agree with that. Haven't really signaled it on camera, but that's that's the way that I am now intending to move primarily, I guess. Wee bit of an uptake there for you. I'll take those folk right out of there and send two of you over to this cage for another point five, and then one of you to help this one. Oh man, there was so much arable land. Just none of it wanted to be accessible to us early on, eh? 
cruel. Cruel and mean. A rain mill, a smelter, or a leather worker at this point. I'll take the smelter, sure. Because we can, is why. Ah, there we go, another event completed, giving us more renown again. This one's about to complete for 0.75. So, you want to break into this one for us, bud? Oh, actually, no, there is a dangerous glade over here that is already ex extremely accessible for us. I do like a lot of the decisions that I made in this city, where we've got this secondary support city, which was doing decently well, largely what this is serving as is a plus 10% modifier to everyone's production, as well as plus 2 to global resolve. Uh, we chose our expansion directions very much based on where we could put, put, uh, put more additional hearths after the initial... Obviously with the spacing concerns, they cannot overlap in any way. We started to set up the ability to break into areas later on. Obviously, I should have realized that I had enough simple tools to deal with absolutely every objective that was going to come my way in the you know, future lifetime of me and all of my descendants. Sure. Well, yeah, I mean, in retrospect, sure. <laughs> At the moment, though, I'm just going to send these two missions to loot a little and celebrate as we roll in the reputation. You know, I'm also going to burn Glade event work speed. So I burn Sea Marrow here in order to increase the event work speed by 50% in the Glade. Glad to actually be finally utilizing burning different resources. I mean, I could also increase global production speed by 25% if I had some oil to burn, but I do not at the moment. Come on. Oh, this one will actually finish first. The medium abandoned cache is going to be the reason that we have our success. As soon as the loading screen hit, I was just ready for it to pop the message, but I will take reinforced axes again, because that sounds like it'd be hilarious if we actually did need to continue. Ah, and then as soon as I hit the space bar to unpause there, we have achieved a complete settlement. We have won a game near the ruined settlement modifier. We've also got nine machinery, 42 stockpile, and won a game near a dangerous glade event, or rather with the dangerous glade event still active, that giving us a deed that may be important. Let me check it out. Smoldering City. We have two more deeds complete. One giving us a wall corner. And the second is going to give us enough experience to pop another level. Giving us new Citadel upgrades. Uh, Apocatry for two-star cosmetics, incense, and biscuits. As well as a smithy for two-star simple coats and trade goods. A grove, which uses nearby farm fields to produce resin and crystallized dew. Not even the spark dew, but the crystallized dew itself. Markets, a place where villagers can fulfill their need for luxury and cleanliness. There's also a passive effect of market carts. Improvised tools. Woodcutters are tasked with creating makeshift tools. Discovering a glade grants five simple tools, but at the cost of a negative five to the woodcutter's resolve. If you're using beavers due to all of your woodcutting, beavers already want a lot of resolve. They are very, very picky, but they get five resolve for being your woodcutters in the first place. So if you just have beavers doing your woodcutting, this is the ability to just solve all of the events. Stormwalker training. Your villagers have learned how to traverse the wilderness the very best. Uh, all trade routes are faster by 40%. Neat. Keen to play with a couple of those modifiers, but for the moment, I have the ability to unlock the beaver house as an essential blueprint. Is that still my highest priority at the moment? Ooh. Permanent plus five to storage capacity of all buildings in your settlement, and then the next level is you can upgrade hubs to the district level. Oh, I want to go to that district level. If I wanted to at this point, I could also spend 30 in order to unlock 
allows you to pay Amber to reroll blueprints offered to you each year. That's actually really powerful. Especially as I'm increasingly using trade settlements. Oh, but what if I don't have 48 and can't even get the district after the next one? I'm going to save my resources here. I really want to have a district up. Okay. Abaton, all you up. Let me quickly pull up a list of names before I try and settle where we are going to settle next. Flooded Mines for heavy adjacency to Oluwap. Also, you know, more machinery modifier, sure. I don't know, I want to go like a little bit further out in the area and open up more space so that I don't have to overlap and decrease the rewards that I get in doing so. So here I could have the Coral Forest, which is just, you know, it's the same modifier as we just played in. I would actually prefer to play in a new modifier if possible. Uh, I could, you know, build something up here near Abiton instead. A uh, couple different versions of the marshlands. Marshlands being giant resource nodes can be found in Forbidden Glades. Each glade will have a different one. And gathering speed is increased by 10% for every two workers assigned to gathering camps. We've also got mushrooms growing in the trees here. Mmm, mushrooms in the trees. I like that. My god, if I take the beavers, I get 10 simple tools. That's going to be the ability to break into a dangerous glade really early on and solve the event there as well. I'm, I'm taking it. We're going. Absolutely. Let's name this settlement. I would, I'm trying to think of ways to change these names in order to have them, you know, fit the, the, the structure of a city. Uh, this one just comes free. Disnomia. This town is Disnomia. Um, let's look at what you have. Yeah, two stone. Meat, insects, and eggs. Trapper's Camp wants to be here. Absolutely. Okay, let's give you some additional stone, clay, and wood for the very start. Because I'm already heavily incentivized to figure out my food very quickly after going on in. There you go. First things first. Obviously. Second thing second, though, if we built upwards, I'm pretty sure. Small half. Yeah. We can have a small half very comfortably in the middle of that entire area. This one? This one down here is a bit further. Yeah, we would have to go all the way down to here in order to access this one. Or rather, to place it comfortably. This one's not as difficult. So this is probably like second expansion. First expansion is going to be directly up. So let's sort out two woodcutters camps to immediately try and do so. Oh, we do already have some leech broodmothers here. So we already have a great reason to go for the trapper's camp. If you offer it to me, I'll take it. <gasps> no, but instead you will offer me a carpenter for two star plank production and two star simple tool production. Simple tool production is going to take still from us more copper bars or crystallized dew. But it absolutely... Herbless camp for herbs, berries, and mushrooms in the environment. There are mushrooms as natural resources in the environment. No berries and no herbs, though. There's a small amount of oil uh, of soil, rather. I'm probably going to take the cookhouse here. But I'm going to hold off because there's no reason to do it immediately. I don't have anything uh, kind of forcing my hand just yet. Okay. Let's get these woodcutters caps up. Um, something secondary I'm going to want to do, actually, is... I'm going to quickly get the crude workstation. And I'm even going to put down the scaffold for our carpenter. I want to get plank production online as soon as possible, so if I just set you to five planks, two fabric, and 
Yeah, this is telling me, you know, I could have figured this out without building the crude workstation, but I'm going to need it eventually anyway, um, that I'm going to need some fiber in order to actually start this. I can't get fiber from the root deposit. Roots, leather, reed. I mean, leather from the brood mother seems the most possible here. Each charge is one of meat and one of leather, as well as a 20% chance to get another leather. I mean, I'm glad to see that. Hmm. Oh. Well, here's a couple of options for us. Peasant supplies, cannibalism, and fiber delivery line. Peasant supplies gives us three packs of provisions for each new villager. This would just immediately give us the ability to start shipping stuff out via trade routes. Fiber delivery, which then, you know, solves all of our other resource problems on the back end because we have a bunch of money to buy anything from traders. Uh, and the fiber delivery line is the ability to get consistent fiber plant uh, or uh, plant fiber generation so that I would have the ability to do things like make... Uh, uh, wait, the trees are giving me leather? No, I'm taking the, the peasant supplies. I didn't know the trees were actually capable of giving me leather here. I'm going to get enough leather to solve the fabric problem soon. Not quick, but I just need some dedicated woodcutters going consistently. Honestly, I almost feel like I want to put down a third woodcutter at this point. I'm not going to, but I do feel like it. Let's start getting those planks produced. Choose an order. Need for sheltered is... This is definitely the one I'm going to want to go for. Planting crops being 1%, 25% uh, faster, as well as pack of crops being faster to make additional, rather. You make an additional every time you make it. Sorry. Uh, neither of those are going to affect a map where I'm not capable of planting that many things. The other is also promising to give me more people, which I desperately want. Uh, cut through the forest to discover two glades in order to get increased stone and clay production as well as two simple... Uh, sorry, six simple tools? That's really good, but the amber trade is also something that's very available to us with the provisions online. And it gives us more villagers. I'm going to take that. And now we have complete two glade events, three villagers, six simple tools, ten planks. We'll be taking that one. Yeah, that's going to really help us just push forward as we're doing all of this. Um, while I say that as well, let me be conscious to put down a trading post. So that I actually have the ability to ship out the stuff on the trading routes that I keep saying I'm capable of doing. Mm, I'm gonna let them make up to no, I'm not gonna let them make up to ten planks. That's too many. They're gonna end up making up to eight anyway. Unfortunately, we do just need to let time continue to run here for a bit. Oh, gain one free cornerstone reroll for every reputation point gained during the drizzle season. That's cool as hell. Okay, make sure that I gain my reputation during Drizzle. Got it. Gift from the woods, gain five amber every Drizzle season, plus an additional five amber for each hostility level reached. Beautiful. Okay, yeah, they're starting to idle because they just do not have enough. So I'm going to take them out of the building so they'll make the trading posts for us. By the time the trading post is done, hopefully we'll be free and clear to throw them at events. There you are. We've had no additional villagers since the start, unfortunately. Oh, and thank heck, because we have nothing that we could sell to anyone at the moment. Neither of these are limited in any way from trying to break into the new area, so that should happen just about any second now, and indeed it does. Inscribed Monolith, Law Tablet 5. Harmony. It pours, yet it does not flood. 
as if the earth itself greedily drinks every last drop of this eternal curse. Um, I guess it's a harmony decoration that I'm just capable of having. Maybe it has a secret effect that it is not, uh, not necessarily telling me right now. Who knows? What I do know is, is that the stone tooth termite burrow here is capable of being sold with coal. I'll just send coal at it then. And we will get a constant source of edible insects. There's also a haunted brewery. So Haunted Brewery, uh, only while I'm working it do I get negative three to global resolve for 50 seconds, but once I have it, I believe it will be, yeah, a flawless brewery. It's incredible at making ale and packs of crops and pickled goods. I'm definitely going to be getting this back, but maybe I do it via Spark Dew. Maybe this is a good opportunity for me to early on build a rain collector and actually have someone attending it. Uh, let's take one person out of a woodcutter's camp and tell you to go make the fabric in order to finish the carpenter, and then I can get the carpenter to actually make the rest of the planks that I care about for the facilities. The reason the carpenter is the big limit here is because I'm going to need a bunch of planks for making big shelters. That's my next planned investment. Ooh, look at this ro ro rock deposit up here. Bunch of roots and insects and copper ore inside as well, baby. Oh my god, speaking of copper ore, there's even an amassment of that for a mine. Um, concerning that, let's just open up the area where a mine would want to go. And I'm going to move the other woodcutter's camp to... Honestly, you just start expanding the area, but do not open glades. I want to turn in some of these orders, but also I am waiting a decent amount of time and getting a decent amount of uh, Queen's Impatience here that I'm going to be able to cast off into the void as soon as I get any of my own reputation. I'm so pleased with the Stone Tithe, uh, Stone Tithe, Stone Tooth Termite Burrow. Views resolve is low, have to expect that. No one has a house yet. And I'll drop you from that. You'll go and try and build the carpenter. I mean, yeah, I can put down a big shelter as well. No one's gonna really stop me. There we go, big shelter. I mean, unfortunately I can't favor the beavers until there's two species total so that I can favor them over something. Ah, they thought of it. How dare they have thought of it. Okay, four planks. Maximum of 25 at any one time, but other than that, go nuts. Yeah. I'm also going to prioritize taking down anything that's going to prevent building the next big shelter. I might not have any builders at the moment, but I am about to get a couple more people. Calming the forest every two newly completed dangerous and forbidden glade events lowers hostility by 50. I don't really want to lower hostility that much to be entirely honest though. Ancient Pact, you can see the content of undiscovered glades, but discovering dangerous and forbidden glades kills a villager. I definitely don't want to do that. And Rebellious Spirit gain a global resolve for every two impatience points. Here, I think I'm actually gonna, gonna ask for something that's more actively assisting my build. Boost global resolve for three for 60 seconds each time I finish a trade route and the duration stacks. Or, wood production's increased by plus one, but harvesting and planting are 25% slower in a world where I know that harvesting and planting are not common gonna occur at all, in fact. I'll take it. I'm also going to take as many new villages as you are capable of giving me. Come on, make planks already. Uh, all right, that sparked you. We've also not got anyone in here trying to make them. 
I can take one of you out of the half, and then I will replace that with a Lizard Firekeeper, giving everyone a little bit of global resolve. But also getting a, another one of the beavers into a job that they particularly enjoy. Avid engineers, those beavers. So the termite nest is actually going to remain, which is going to limit my positioning for the small hearth a little bit here. Unfortunately. See, I always want it to have, like, a full perimeter that I'm capable of moving around. Grass cap mushrooms, it's going to be difficult to get rid of those. I mean, what if I did take the herbalist camp? Gives me the ability to use something I otherwise don't have the ability to use. I mean... We have two races that like biscuits, two that like jerky, two that like pie, one that like skewers. Yeah, I don't think cookhouse is like a heavy priority for me and I already have the simple tool creation. So yeah, I will take the herbalist can. Grove and plantation are probably both turned down here in uh, preference for the meat. Plant fiber, reed, grain, and vegetables. I'm not going to have those consistently either, though. Maybe I do just take the grove. Or plantation. I won't have much farmable area, but what I do have will be worked. Out of these, probably the plantation is most significantly helpful. A lot of tools for making pies in particular. All right, so Hilda's arrived. Welcome, Sir Hilda. Hmm. Woodcutter's move, 20% faster, is pretty appealing to me. We do have enough provisions. Ooh, I can sell some meat, but unfortunately it's not selling for a particularly good rate. It is the only thing that's selling at the moment, though. Well, sure, I can obtain that. Well, can I obtain that, actually? I might need to buy some meat. Or foodstuffs, just in general, from Sahilda here. Yeah, I've still got insects, I've still got mushrooms. I'm gonna get more mushrooms. No, my food is actually fine. I, I, I was worrying about nothing. I could get some additional simple tools. Hmm, probably not necessary either. Oh, it's fabric. That's what it is. It's anything that can assist me in making, uh, making fabric, which uh, none of these can do. Plant fiber, leather, and reeds. None of those are available here. Hmm. Okay, I need to reorient myself for a second here. I am completing shelters. I am attempting to do trade routes for eight gold worth of stuff sold. I'm currently selling six. More fabric, more planks. Either or would be good trade resources for us here. Other than that, uh, do you have... Yeah, you have flour? If you gave me the flour... Um, I, I guess I will also have you throw in a couple of planks. Now I don't have enough amber to actually hand in the mission. Hang on. Ooh, so now I actually still need to sell some stuff. I'm going to get way more wood, so I don't need to be too precious about this. There we go. Oh, sorry. It's uh, 504 for that. So now I have the ability to send in the mission, giving me six simple tools, as well as one wildfire essence and two new villagers. 
Yeah, this is for exploding the amount of people that I have on base so that I can more quickly suddenly expand up north. Good. Do I need anything more from Sihilda at this point? Ooh, bakery. That's biscuits and pie. It's two things a lot of people like. And in fact, the bakery itself is 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 a hot area. So the lizards would like being employed there. Yeah. I'll take a bakery. Bake a takery too. Let's camp. Cares about being put up here. I'm gonna move this woodcutter's camp and just cut that. That's all I need. As soon as that area has been cut down, I'm gonna erect the next hearth area. Finally, our shelter is actually going up down here as well, so let me also give a little bit of an impression that this is a casual town. Two more objectives for me to pick. Uh, keep human resolve above 24 for 30 seconds. Plus one to coat production is pretty good. Plus two to human... <laughs> plus two to human production. Uh, plus two to additional humans in any group of newcomers as well as 30 pi. I mean, all of that is pretty good. But there's nothing wrong with feeding the people or clothing the people. 30 clothing fulfilled gives us plus one to fabric production from then on as well as some provisions and parts. I'm going to lean towards happy humans because I think I'm more capable of fulfilling that early on. A lizard house. Six lizard houses and 40 skewers. Only lizards like skewers right now. No, we're definitely not going for that. We're going for the pack of luxury goods on the opposing side. So we're about to advance into a encampment very quickly, as well as have the shelters mission complete. Hey, ah, right, they actually hadn't built the barrels and benches up here yet. Trade route completes. Take back six. Uh, yes, of course, I bought all that flour so I could sell it. I forgot about that. There we go. Let's pass that on. And, in fact, I will improve my trade routes with the Smoldering City by selling some planks there. As useful as they are. An additional reputation unlocks an herb Trapper's Camp! Thank you! I've been waiting for this for ages. Desperately. Hello, Trapper's Camp. I guess I want it to face the camp itself. We have four unemployed lizards, so I can throw at those uh, those production facilities as well. The humans are also getting pretty happy. If I favor them, I might be able to complete the happy humans mission. One out of two blade events completed. Haunted Brewery... Uh, still don't have enough spark to complete it, but I can complete it with just planks. I should have done that ages ago, as it turns out. Planks is easy. Wait, I just gave negative three to global resolve while I'm trying to finish the humans. And it didn't do any problem! Works out in the end. I'll unfavor them and complete a trade route for two. Oh, selling more planks for an even better rate. Sign me up. Seven for 14 of these. Works for me. A cellar, a druid's hut, and a brewery. Definitely don't need a brewery. We've got a flawless one on the field. A druid's hut for oil. Oil from meat? I can make that very well. And the oil itself is plus production for the entire area. I'm going to take a druid's hut and actually try and incorporate it into the build. 
Something I'm really glad about in terms of like low, the, like the slow level up of your ultra settlement uh, is that you unlock buildings like this at an appropriate rate to gradually include them in your playstyle. To gradually expand upon and explore them. Deeply cool. Another event here, just... Uh, you know, I want to throw some more people at it, I just don't have people to throw it at at the moment. Where's all the people? They're locked behind the missions I haven't complete. Come on, just those last few. I mean, honestly, I probably don't even need those last few trees down but I will wait. I can demonstrate some patience, I'm sure, I think. Given enough time. Trade route complete, gives us another seven. Ooh, I can sell off some meat. I think I will do. Just cycle as many of those trade routes as quickly as I possibly can. I'm getting global result for everyone while I'm doing it, right? Still? Or did I turn that down? I did turn that down, didn't I? Yes, that's not our... Not our game. However, gathering speed is increased by 10% for every two workers assigned to gathering camps, so I do want to prioritize gathering camps wherever available, rather than, you know... The, I mean... Uh, Woodcutting does count as a gathering camp. Good to see. Everyone's resolve is pretty low right now. That's okay, we'll finish working the Haunted Brewery in time for it not to be a problem. There we go. Haunted Brewery is now done. It's a flawless brewery. We can make ale, we can make pickled goods. I mean, we do actually have groups of people who like pickled goods, and... I mean, it's not like I have a ridiculous amount of goods to make with them. So thanks, and those back. Uh, advanced cooking, workers can carry more to glade events or the medium abandoned cash could just give us 20 amber which i could then use to purchase other general tools in the future it's gonna open the medium abandoned cash then final tree come down come on perfect let's move the woodcutters camp out of the way making space for the small half i'm gonna put here And there we go. So, one move path all the way around you. And then no problem with the termite mound. And in fact, I can even incorporate that into a building. We can get a mine down for that copper. And I can get an herbalist camp down. A stone deposit as well. I don't really have space for housing up here yet. Which is gonna end up being a problem pretty soon. So let's get this woodcutter's camp and then place that nestled in this position and tell it to avoid opening glades. It'll just continue to open up this area a little bit more. Uh, one final thing is while we're still carting resources up there consistently, I will join the paths between the two areas. Okay. While another trade route completes itself in the background, we do have a whole mess of eggs. We've got a decent amount of stone as well. Crystallized dew and book. Uh, no, not those materials, but we do have eggs and stone. I'm gonna give you eggs because uh, they're easier for me to get rid of knowing that I won't regret it. Take two folk out of that carpenter. Hmm. Biscuit diet. 
farmers have a plus 75% chance of double yields while under the effect of biscuits. I'm not going to have that many biscuits. I'd have to get a lot of wheat to make a lot of biscuits. Same with the bread peels and bakery. But there is crowded caravan. Each newcomer group has two additional villages. I'm going to take that. I just want as many people as I can get. Please, just six humans? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I do want that. I can make human houses. I know how to do that. Another complete trade route for us. Ooh, roots I could sell off? Sure, probably. Clay I could sell off? That's not a good rate for it. Our relationship with the smoldering city is getting very good. I'm going to suddenly get some pretty spicy deals offered from them consistently, I feel. Uh, food stuff's going pretty well. We've got 30 packs of provisions at the moment. Nine imparts. Uh, 12 simple tools. Okay, that's enough. I'm going to break downwards. We're doing it. Next trade route is complete for another eight to us. Do I really want to sell out all of my stone and all of my clay? Like, probably not, right? There's copper ore there. Yeah, it's probably going to be otherwise difficult for me to create in the future. <sighs> Fabric's already kind of difficult for us. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set you to make 10. I'm going to set you to make 10 as well. And then I'm just going to maintain those levels. Explorer's Lodge, Lizard House, and Clan Hall. So, Brawling Education, Lizard's House, or Brawling Religion. Uh, brawling and Education affects two people. Brawling and Religion affects three. Because humans like religion and the lizards like religion and brawling. However, there's also the Lizard House if I wanted to just give them directly their favored homes. Crown Chronicles is the other benefit we could get here, which is a plus one to global resolve for each rebuilt or salvaged ruin. Oh no, wait, that's the education one. Clan Hall is what we would get, which is all camp production increased by 50%. I think we take the Clan Hall. And build it. Hello, large destroyed caravan. Wow. This is giving us 10 luxury goods, which would immediately complete the luxurious delivery quest for us without me having to go out of my own way. I also get 25 barrels. I get 30 uh, ale. I get 10 copper bars. All for negative six global resolve whilst we work on it. There's also a tool shop here. If I want to have the ability to generate, yeah, simple tools as best as possibly can. Honestly, I'm already pretty good at making simple tools. I think I'm just going to loot this. Although I have to make some fabric first in order to be able to do so. Here's a farming field down here. I think I will actually attempt to work that. And... I'm not going to give you all of my clay. I'll give you some of my clay. And I think that's generous enough. Double's camp is up. Start looting from it. I mean, obviously, I want the small half to be up as soon as possible as well. But yeah, it's just going to get its delivery of its final stone in just, just any, any second here. Come on. Trade route complete for another two to us. Smoldering City. I almost want to give them... You know what? I'm going to expand my trade route slots with them. Twice. Final time. 
honestly, kind of worth it. I'm going to sell you 50... Uh, I need that leather for the fabric at the moment, don't I? I've only made two. I'm about to make another two. Push that. Uh, okay, I'm going to... I'm not going to sell all of my fabric like that, but that was about to be a really good trade deal if we could have. 38, fine. Having 10, sorry, having uh, five different available routes with the uh, Smoldering City at all times right now should give me the ability to just trade with them and feel pretty comfortable. Villagers move 10% faster is one of the options for the medium band acacia. Sure, let's let's open that. I'm gonna send some folk down to start working on the other ruin as well. Ooh, coal and copper from the same mine here. Very, very dense. Jorg has arrived. Welcome, Jorg. Woodcutters move 20% faster, always like that. Uh, three incense for every 10 roots, not bad either. Bunch of meats, pretty good. Honestly, anything I can sell to anyone else is also really good for me. So... Jerky? Yeah, I'll buy your jerky. Absolutely. So, jerky, meat. You want 35 for that? Sure. You can have 36 if you throw in just a couple of mushers. I guess a single musher. Grand. Now I'm gonna take the jerky you sold me and I'm gonna sell 48 of that for 18. And then the meat you sold me, I'm going to sell 80 of that for... Wait. You're not letting me? Why am I... Oh, all of my trade routes uh, are that filled at the moment? Oops. We'll, we'll come back and do that in time. It'll be fine. I just have to do it before the end of the season. Long allowance until then, thankfully. Right? Yeah, we'll have enough time. We'll have enough time. <laughs> just getting a little nervous behind the scenes, just in case. Okay, trappers camps. These now need to move. Actually, we don't have anything for trappers camps anymore. I'm going to take both of my trappers camps down. Freeing up a bunch of people to work. Uh, yeah, let's start squeezing some of the meat in order to make oil. Alchemists do this best? I don't have any harpies. That's fine. Uh, we'll make up to a limit of 25 oil at any one period of time. Honestly, I'm probably just going to need two people in there maximum. Come on, get the luxury goods back. Trade route complete. Now I can actually sell off that meat for 28. I really wish that I could run more active trade routes at a time. That would be really, really helpful. Okay, I'll get 18 there, though. Uh, sure. I'll sell... 36 stone. Stone is actually not that difficult for me to collect. We have a collection camp for stone up here. Let's throw some people into it. Lawless Brewery. You are long since no longer making pickled goods at this point, which is fine. Moving this woodcutter's camp slightly out of position will give me the ability to now build two big shelters, and I'm also just going to build a human house. And... I mean, some of these places I think I can actually kind of, like, block out. 
responsibly. Like, I know that that area is only going to be used to block people from getting back to the end section there, then sure, have a pipe one way and a valve pipe the other way, making it look like the stonecutter's camp and the mine are one contiguous building of some kind. So there's five over there, then I can put a... Uh, bench out front and then two rotated barrels on the other side that's the eight that I need total and now I only need four more in the way of higher tier aesthetics the aesthetic aesthetics rather than the comfort decorations this level down here we could also do the same And in fact, I'm going to use like a very similar template. I guess I need one more place. There we go. And sure, let's have the market area fill out a bit more. Beautiful. That should all end up looking quite comfortably neat. As well as obviously get us to two districts on the board, which will each give us plus 10% to global production. I mean, we only have four free builders at any one period of time to make any of this happen. Admittedly, unfortunately. Oh, and take back the luxury goods. I want to hand in the next mission. Oh my god. I have only just seen how long I have already spent. Woodcutter's camp has no suitable trees nearby. That is fine, because they've been doing diligent work clearing up the area for me already. Uh, let's expand this zone out here. No longer allowing you to open glades. And the luxury goods, final pack, delivery. Come on. There it goes. All right, I'm clicking this button finally. Actually, hang on, I have more of these I can look at. 10 harmony decorations gives us plus one to all packs of goods. 20 pottery whenever I open a new area. Yeah, I'm gonna take the archeology span here. Even if the other one would have been capable of uh, being built by us relatively easily. We resolve above 26 for 120 seconds. We are not good at berry production. Root production being more powerful for us, though. Definitely has an appeal. With another trade route complete and many, many, many more available for our near future. And one blueprint in the bank. I'm going to say that my name has been Rhapsody, the name of the game has been against the storm. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist in the description down below, as well as a series playlist on screen up at the top left. YouTube recommendation down below. String pass are the names of the people so generously supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash Plays. That are above the thanks in. A special thanks this episode to 3D. Hopefully you all have been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you all next time.